In this lesson, we'll discuss acid-base reactions. All acid-base calculations are actually equilibrium calculations, so a good understanding of equilibrium is essential. You should watch the video tutorials on equilibrium first, if you haven't seen them yet. Even though acid-base reactions are just chemical equilibrium, they are more complex, and most students don't seem to understand them. Here's the key to understanding acid-base reactions. All acid-base reactions, at least those that we see in general chemistry, occur in aqueous solutions. This means that water is always present in any acid-base reaction. Not only is water present, it is present in much larger quantity than any other species in the reaction. Typically, in a one molar solution, there are about 60 water for every solute molecule. Therefore, surrounding any acid-base reaction, there is essentially an infinite supply of water molecules. Though water participate in acid-base reactions, it will never be the limiting reagent. In fact, its concentration essentially never changes and does not ever enter the equilibrium expression for K. Even though water is present in every acid-base reaction in a passive way, it does do one interesting thing. Water is one of those rare molecules that can act as both an acid and a base. An acid is a molecule that can donate protons, H+, and a base is a molecule that can pick up protons. Because water can act both as an acid and a base, it can transfer a proton from one water molecule to another, making H3O plus and OH minus. The reaction of water with itself in an acid-base reaction to form H3O plus and OH minus is called the autoionization reaction. In case you get the wrong impression that water does this freely, you need to know that the equilibrium constant for this reaction, Kw, is 10 to the minus 14. This means that the equilibrium lies far to the left, and water is generally very reluctant to autoionize. If there is no acid or base other than water, the number of H3O plus and OH minus are necessarily equal, and each must be equal to the square root of Kw, which is 10 to the minus 7. This defines a neutral solution. Because the H3O plus concentration is often so small, it is more convenient to specify the pH instead. pH equals negative log of the H3O plus concentration. And you can also define a pOH in the same way. In neutral water, pH and pOH are therefore both 7. Sometimes you see the autoionization reaction written this way, H2O going to H plus and OH minus. This must be understood as a shorthand for the reaction above, because every acid-base reaction must have two reactants, an acid and a base. We will avoid writing the autoionization this way, and will always try to use H3O plus instead of H plus. Now, the neutrality of water can be altered when an acid or a base is added to water. If a compound wants to give away its proton more than H2O, it can push the H2O molecules to accept this proton. For example, hydrofluoric acid, HF, can force its proton on H2O, making F- minus and H3O+. Plus. So HF plus H2O goes to F- minus plus H3O+. Plus. The reaction is sometimes called an acid dissociation reaction, or the hydrolysis of HF. Because of this, HF can tip the balance between H3O plus and OH minus, and produce a solution with more H3O plus than OH minus. Even though H3O plus and OH minus are now no longer equal, the concentrations are not independent, because they must obey the Kw equilibrium since water is always present. And we see that the OH minus concentration is always equal to 10 to the minus 14 divided by H3O plus. Taking the negative log of the Kw equation, we see that whenever water is present, pH plus pOH 
must always equal 14. How strongly does HF push protons onto H2O is indicated by the equilibrium constant of the acid dissociation reaction. This is called Ka, or sometimes the acid dissociation constant. For HF, Ka is roughly 7 times 10 to the minus 4. Clearly, HF is a much stronger acid than water, who has a Kw of only 10 to the minus 14. But even though this is the case, HF is not a strong acid. If you do an ICE calculation and compute the percent dissociation of HF in a one molar solution, you see that only 3 in every 100 HF molecules is actually dissociated, so HF is called a weak acid. Now, not all molecules that can donate a proton are acidic. Some potentially acidic molecules have such a weak Ka that they are essentially neutral in water. That is, they don't have any power to force a proton onto water. For example, ethanol, CH3CH2OH, is potentially acidic. Its acidic hydrogen is on the oxygen. But its Ka is about 10 to the minus 16. So as an acid, ethanol is weaker than water itself and is therefore practically neutral. We can contrast this to a strong acid like HCl. A strong acid has a very large Ka. The Ka of HCl is close to 10 to the 6th power. This Ka is so strong that every H2O molecule that touches water dissociates completely and there are no intact HCl molecules in the solution. If you put X moles of HCl in water, you will get a solution with X moles of H3O plus and X moles of Cl minus. Bases are similar but opposite. The action of a base in water is to grab a proton from H2O, making the conjugate acid of the base in OH minus. For example, NH3 ammonia acting as a base in water undergoes the reaction NH3 plus H2O going to NH4 plus plus OH minus. The equilibrium constant for this is called the Kb of ammonia. Ammonia is a rather weak acid as Kb is approximately 10 to the minus 5. Examples of strong bases are the soluble hydroxides, such as NaOH. A one molar solution of NaOH would contain one molar of OH-. There are some bases which are so weak that they are practically neutral. An example is Cl-, which is the conjugate base of the strong acid HCl. The Kb of Cl- is much smaller than Kw, so Cl- is weaker than water as a base and is therefore practically neutral. And this makes sense, since HCl is a very strong acid and very much wants to dump its proton, and after it drops its proton and forms Cl-, Cl- would have no desire to go back to HCl. In the next lesson, we'll talk about the acid-base properties of different molecules and ions.